Everyone, before we begin, I'd like to thank each of our witnesses for testifying before our subcommittee today. I would also like to thank my colleagues who are participating at today's hearing, both remotely and in person. If you listen to the news this, over this past year, there's a good chance that you've heard about one of the many cyber attacks that have targeted a high-profile technology company, research institution, energy pipeline, or even the federal government. Today, we will examine how this latest uptick in hacking attempts could affect the vital component of our critical infrastructure and even U.S. national security, and that is the vulnerability of our electrical grid. The electrical grid is the backbone of daily life here in America. It provides energy to heat our homes, power our hospitals, and charge our smartphones. It also uh, is a priority target for state and non-state cyber adversaries. A successful attack on the electrical grid could have devastating consequences on U.S. national security and our economic interests. Last month, Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm confirmed that cyber adversaries have the tools and capabilities necessary to shut down our electrical grid. In, re in a recent statement, the Department of Energy warned, and this is a quote, the United States faces a well-documented and increasing cyber threat from malicious actors seeking disrupt, to disrupt the electricity that Americans rely on to power our homes and businesses every day. In response, President Biden has taken decisive, meaningful action since assuming office to strengthen our national cyber defense and protect our critical infrastructure. For example, in April, President Biden announced a 100-day plan led by the Department of Energy and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, to strengthen the security and resilience of, US, of the U.S. electrical grid. And in May, President Biden issued an executive order that will modernize our national cybersecurity defenses and improve information sharing between the U.S. government and private sector, which is ultimately responsible for operating and securing the electrical grid. I want to applaud and I am grateful to President Biden for recognizing the urgency of this threat. However, significant vulnerabilities continue to persist. And the Biden administration should consider whether additional regulations or policy initiatives are needed to strengthen the cyber defense and resiliency of our electrical grid. For example, as a growing number of networked consumer devices connect to electrical distribution systems, these devices create additional gateways that hackers can exploit to gain access to the grid. These vulnerabilities are exacerbated by the fact that federal cybersecurity standards do not currently apply to distribution systems and are instead only mandatory for certain power generation and transmission systems. Even those mandatory reliability standards that apply to electric generation and transmission systems do not fully incorporate leading cybersecurity guidance from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. In addition, many key components of the electrical grid are produced or rely upon parts produced by international suppliers. This equipment is vulnerable to tampering or espionage by foreign actors. Some of this equipment, especially large power transformers, can take over a year to produce, transport, and install even in an emergency, making the U.S. electrical grid heavily dependent on overseas manufacturing. Lastly, but certainly not least, multiple federal agencies and state and local entities, each, each with its own role, its own responsibilities, and its own authorities, are all tasked with protecting the electrical grid. This creates ample opportunity for bureaucratic stovepiping and can undermine the incident response to any events. To that end, I look forward to hearing from our witnesses about how they are working together and sharing information to ensure malign cyber actors cannot slip through the cracks. With that, I'd like to thank our witnesses for their service and for testifying before our subcommittee on this critically important issue. And I will now yield to my friend, the ranking member from Wisconsin, Mr. Grothman.